In this video, we're going to see how we can use differentiation to find the coordinates of stationary points or turning points as you knew them at GCSE and how we can then find the second derivative and use that as a shortcut to find out what type of stationary point it is. So, here is a cubic equation. That's the exact function there. We've already seen how we can find the intercepts of this graph. This is where y is equal to zero. So I can take my function, make it equal to zero, solve it and find these coordinates. We've also seen how we could find the intercept on the y-axis. Again, making, uh, this time making x equal to zero, putting that in here and we find the y-coordinate. So we've already done plenty of work working out the intercepts of a graph. What I'm interested in is what's the coordinate of here? How far up does this graph go? How far down does this go? So, that's what this is all about, working out the coordinates of these points. Now, at that point, I know that if I were to draw a tangent here, that's not drawn very well, if I was to draw a tangent here, or if I was to draw a tangent down, um, down with the other one, down here, it's a bit better. At both of those points, the gradient of the tangent is zero. It's a horizontal line. The gradient of this line is zero. The gradient of this line is zero. Whenever we have a stationary point, the gradient is zero, which should hopefully make sense, because remember, when we find the gradient, we're finding how much it changes. So if it's a stationary point, it's not changing at all. Another way of thinking about it, the function here is increasing. It has a positive gradient here. Here it has a negative gradient. So at some point between it having a positive gradient to being a negative gradient, it must go through zero. So, if I want to work out the coordinates of that point, all I need to do is to differentiate, make it equal to zero, and solve the equation. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to differentiate this. So, the one-third x cubed becomes x squared, because the three comes down, multiplies by the one-third to give a one, 3 take away 1 will become 2. The, two x, uh, sorry, the x squared becomes 2x. And then the minus 3x becomes minus 3. And the 2 differentiates to be 0. So I've differentiated that cubic. I am now going to make that equal to 0. I am now going to solve that equation to find where the gradient equals 0. So let me factorise that. It's going to be x minus 3, x plus 1. So I find that I've got x equals 3, or x equals minus 1. So, I've got the x coordinates of my stationary points. I now want to find the y coordinates of my stationary points. So all I will do now, substitute 3 into the original equation and that will tell me what the y coordinate is and then substitute minus 1 into the original equation and that will tell me what the y coordinate is for that. So now I've managed to find the coordinates of both of these points here and here. That was obviously when x is 3, that's when x equals minus 1. So that's how we find stationary points. We differentiate, make it equal to zero, solve that equation. We've then got the x coordinates of the stationary points. We can then substitute that back into the original function, and that will tell you the y coordinates of the stationary points. 
The next thing that you're going to need to be able to do is to be able to determine the nature of the stationary point. What type of stationary point is it? Now, clearly in this example here, I can see from my graph that this stationary point here is what we call a local maximum. Maximum, because it is the highest value that the function gets to. Can't get any bigger than that in this local region. We can see that the function will eventually get bigger than that, because it goes up and up and up over here. So the function will eventually get bigger than that, but in this local area, that's the biggest this function can be. Similarly, this is a local minimum, because that's the lowest the function can be in this local area. Again, obviously the function will eventually be lower than that down here, but in this area here, this is the local minimum. So you have two types of stationary points, maximum and minimum. You need to be able to determine which one your stationary point is going to be. And you're going to need to be able to do it without a sketch. Obviously with a sketch I can just say that's the maximum, that's the minimum. But how would we do that without a sketch? Now, you need to have know two methods of doing this. One is a long way that will always work. Then I'm going to show you a short way that involves that second derivative that will work most of the time, but not all the time. And I'll explain about that a little bit later. For the long method, you need to notice that for the maximum, the gradient just in front of the stationary point, the gradient here is positive, the gradient here is negative. So, if I have a situation where the gradient in front of my stationary point is positive and the gradient after my stationary point is negative, then I know it's going to be a maximum. Vice versa, if I know that the gradient just in front of my stationary point is negative and just after the stationary point is positive, then I know it's a minimum because it's going down, then back up, so it's a minimum. So I'm going to show you what that looks like in, a, in an example. I've already written out all the steps here so just to save a bit of time and make the video shorter. So I've got an equation which is like that. I want to find the coordinates and the nature of the stationary points. So I'm going to follow the same steps I did before to work out the coordinates of the stationary points. So I'm going to differentiate this and make it equal to zero. So differentiating this gives this. The 2x cubed becomes 6x squared. The 9x squared becomes 18x. The 24x becomes 24. The 13 disappears. This is my gradient function, I'm making it equal to zero. I then want to solve that equation. To make it a bit easier, I'm going to divide everything through by six. Then I'm going to factorise that and solve it. So I found that I have got a stationary point when x is minus four and when x is one. I am now going to substitute those back in to the original equation, so substituting those back into here to work out the y coordinates. So when I put minus 4 in that original equation, I get 125. When I substitute 1 into that original equation, I get minus 2. So I have found the, co the coordinates of my two stationary points. I now need to figure out are these going to be maximums or maxima? Are they going to be minimums or minima? Or am I going to have one of each? So, to find the nature of these stationary points, remember what I said. If it's a maximum, I know that my graph is going up and then back down. So it has a positive gradient, then a negative gradient. So I need to consider the gradient of my function either side of my stationary points. To do this, let's consider our gradient function. This is my differentiated version from here. This is my gradient function. And like I said, I want to consider this, the size of the gradient, either side of my stationary point. I want to know, 
Is my function going up and then down to give a maximum? Or is it going down and then up to give a minimum? So, when x is minus 4, I'm going to consider the gradient either side of minus 4. So when I say either side, I'm picking a number a little bit less than minus 4, so minus 4.1, and a little bit bigger than minus 4, so minus 3.9. You don't have to pick minus 4.1, you could do minus 4.01 and minus 3.99 if you wanted to. Doesn't really matter. The point is, this is a little bit less than that, this is a little bit more than that. And then what I've done, and I've already done this off screen obviously, is I've substituted these values into my gradient function. So I've done 6 times minus 4.1 squared, plus 18 times minus 4.1, minus 24, and that gave me 3.06. And then I did the same thing there. To be perfectly honest, it doesn't really matter about the actual numbers. The important thing is the sign. The important thing is the fact that this is positive and this is negative. And obviously we know that the gradient is zero at that point. So what that's saying is my graph has a positive gradient here, just before 4. Then I know it has a zero gradient at 4. Then I know it has a negative gradient. So my graph is going up because of the positive here, then flat because it's a stationary point there, then it's going down. So this is a maximum. So when x is minus 4, I have a maximum. What about when x was, when x was 1? Because that was our other stationary point when x is 1. I've done the same thing. I've considered a value just below 1 and just above 1. When I substitute 0.9 in here, I get minus 2.494. When I substitute 1.1 in, I get that. Again, the actual numbers themselves are not important. What is important is the fact that this is negative, so my graph is going down when x is 0.9. Then it's 0, then it's going up. Negative gradient, 0, positive gradient, negative, 0, positive. So this is a minimum. And that's how you can find, that's how you can determine the nature of the stationary point. So now I know this is a maximum, so my graph is going like that at this coordinate, and it's going like that at that coordinate. So I can now draw a nice little sketch of that function. I know it goes up to this coordinate here. I know it goes down through 13. I got the 13 by just making um, x0 here, here, and here. And I know I have a minimum here. And there we go. I've got the coordinates of my stationary points and I've found their nature. Now, this process here, like I said before, is quite a long way of doing it. It will always work and you need to know this method. However, there is a shortcut you can use. And it involves finding the second derivative. So, I just want to talk very quickly about the operator d by dx. It's called an operator because it's something that we do to a function. So, usually, everything you've seen so far, you are applying this operator to the y function. So, we are doing this to a function, um, and that tells you the rate of change of that function with respect to x. It's telling you how quickly the function changes. The gradient, most of the time, we've seen so far. So when I apply this function d by dx, sorry, when I apply the operator d by dx to a function, what that's telling me, so if I do d by dx of this, I get dy by dx. And what that's telling me is how quickly this function changes with respect to x. So I've got some quantity, whatever it is, uh, so far this is with most of the time we're talking about the y-coordinates. And when I apply the operator d by dx to that, I get the rate of change, how quickly that is changing with respect to x. If I now apply the operator again 
So if I apply d by dx to both sides here, I am now looking for the rate of change of the rate of change. Because this was already the rate of change. And then I'm applying the operator again. So that's saying how quickly is the change changing. We can write that as being d2y, I hope it's clear y, I'm right like that, by dx squared. And in terms of the other notation, that would be just x dash dash. Because I differentiated twice. And like I say, this is the rate of change of the rate of change. So if I differentiate a function twice, I get the second derivative, and that tells me how quickly the change is changing. Now, we can use that to help us find the nature of these stationary points. So, at my maximum here, I know that my function is going up, it's then stationary here, and then it's going down. At that point, at this maximum, I know that the second derivative here, d2y by dx squared, I know that that is going to be negative at that point. And I know that because this is the change in the change. And at this point here, the change isn't, uh, the original change isn't changing, but it's about to become negative. My function is going up and up and up, and then it changes so it becomes negative. It's a negative change. The gradient here was positive, the gradient here is negative. It's changed in a negative way. The gradient has changed from being positive to being negative. So at this point, the change in the change will be negative. Similarly down here, I know at this point here, at my minimum, I know the second derivative, so d2y by dx squared. At this point here, I know that this is going to be positive because the gradient is changing in a positive way here. It's going from being negative to being positive. So it's changed in a positive way. So, I know if I have a maximum, that's because the second derivative is negative. If I have a minimum, that's uh, because the second derivative is a positive number. This is my shortcut. So you need to remember, when the second derivative is negative, that means it's a maximum. When the second derivative is positive, that means it's a minimum. So let's go back to that example we saw a few moments ago. This is exactly the same example we saw where I've differentiated this function, divided through by 6, factorised it, I found out that those were the stationary points. Before I had to consider a long, long way of working out the nature. This time I'm going to find the second derivative. So I'm going to differentiate this for a second time to find d2y by dx squared. So when I differentiate this for the second time, I get 12x plus 18. And I want to consider this at my two stationary points. Is this going to be positive or negative at my stationary points? Okay. So when x is minus 4, if I substitute minus 4 into my second derivative, so 12 times minus 4 is minus 48, plus 18 is minus 30. So my second derivative is negative. My second derivative is negative. Therefore, I know it's a maximum. If my second derivative is negative, less than 0, I know it's a maximum. When x is 1, if I substitute 1 into my second derivative, 
12 times 1 is 12, plus 18, I get 30, which is a positive number. Therefore, I know that this is a minimum. And this is our shortcut for working out the nature of stationary points. Obviously, you can see this is, this is a much shorter, neater way of doing it and involves less calculations than doing it like this. However, this always works. This, uh, this here doesn't always work. Because there is a case here where I've not included. I've talked about where the second derivative is negative, and I've talked about where the second derivative is positive. But what about if the second derivative is zero? It's unlikely to happen. But if the second derivative is zero, if I differentiate for the second time, substitute my x coordinate of the stationary point in and get zero, then we can't use this shortcut anymore. And then you have to use the long, work, long way of doing the table, because like I said, that would always work. So, key points to take away from this video. If I want to find the coordinate of a stationary point, I'm going to differentiate, make it equal to zero, solve that equation to get the x coordinates of the stationary point, Substitute those x back into the original to get the y coordinates. If I then want to decide what the nature of the stationary point is, so if I want to know whether it's a maximum or a minimum, I'm then going to differentiate for the second time to get the second derivative. I'm then going to substitute my x value into that equation and see, do I get a positive, in which case it's a minimum? Do I get a negative, in which case it's a maximum? If I get zero, you have to draw the table of information.